Yeah, I cannot change it now. It feels like a defeat. No, I don't. no, I know it's not. It's not a defeat. Um, it's a deserved point for Brighton, obviously, for uh, different reasons, unnecessary, uh, because in our good moments we really we were really good. So we showed um, how to you have to play against Brighton. But then with not playing enough football anymore, we open the door for them. So the best way to defend Brighton is actually to have the ball yourself, um, and. That's what we didn't do for long enough. Um, and that's why we scored two goals, which were incredible. And especially the two goals which didn't but disallowed were absolutely incredible. Sadio's second goal was my favorite goal of all six years, probably in Liverpool, because uh, how we put them under pressure there was just insane and unlucky, but uh, with a probably handball then. Um, yeah, but when they scored their goal, not sure was the cross or not. But who cares? The ball is in, and um, we didn't play enough football anymore. That's and, and not, not the right football. So we attacked obviously in in our good moments the center of of Brighton, which is the way you have to do it. And we didn't do that then anymore. So we slowed the game down in the wrong moments. We um, didn't show enough initiative in other moments. And um, that's then just not good enough. I think after after Moore's goal in the second half, uh, which was disallowed, I can't remember a lot. Maybe the last five, four or five minutes, we were a little more um, on the front foot again. But apart from that, we just tried to calm the game down when we had the ball and defended them. And they had the ball and they scored a wonderful second goal. And that's why they deserve a point. Thanks, Carl. We'll go, we've got in order Paul Joyce, Ron Walker and Killeen O'Neill. Okay. And Paul first. Yeah, can you you said in the in a couple of, after a couple of games this season that the the defending's not not been what you want and the structure of the team hasn't quite been right. What what um what do you need to improve in terms of the team's defensive play? Oh, yeah, there the, are the different things. It's not always the same, obviously. So I know when we talk now about defending and uh, the whole football world, it's, uh, that's why I'm pretty well made, uh, well-paid coach. Um, I don't discuss it on that level. It's not only the last line. It's on the centre half. It's that. It's a, it's a, it's a common thing. Um, today we didn't defend the half spaces right anymore. So um, that was our problem there. Um, and with the way Brighton plays, because they are. I think I heard the word adventurous today a few times. So probably that's the right thing to do. Yeah, pretty on the front foot in these moments. Um, yeah, if you if, if if you don't defend the half space as well, then the last line has to drop a little bit, which makes no sense because they play between the line and all this kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, it's then not to defend anymore. That's how it is. And I know it's now I speak about Brighton, and because the world is a bit strange, um, people just don't respect, still don't respect the quality they have. They might not win, um, I don't know, 35 games a season, but they give. 38 times each t- each game each team a proper game definitely uh, because the things they do the patterns they have they are really good but again it's that's their quality our quality should have been today and the best how I said the best way to defend them would have been to have the ball and then to do smart or clever stuff with it and that's what we didn't do often enough and that's why we, we opened we opened pretty much the the door for for, for them coming back into the game and that's now we pay the price for it. That's all it is. Okay, thanks, Paul. Uh, Ron, and then to uh, Kahim. Hi, Jürgen. Um, you said you stopped playing football and, and that you opened the door for Brighton. Why do you think that that, that was, that, that that happened? I saw a bit quick after the game to say that uh, immediately. So I think it's not nice to, to know how good Brighton is and then score two goals which are disallowed. And I think, I, I didn't see it back. I think... Oof, it was probably close. So the way Sadio Sadio celebrated, he knows that uh, handball is obviously it will be a disallowed goal. So he, I don't think he had this in mind that it could be disallowed. Um, and the, the second goal, or the, the most goal, then that was an incredible play. Wow. So and then don't get that. And it's like, OK, we have obviously much more games than Brighton, all these kind of things. Uh, they played during the week as well, of course. but. We all had a lot of changes, so it's just you could. I could see second half. Um, I was not overly happy with body language of some, and um, that's then obviously never helpful. But you can get through these periods in a game, just not against Brighton. 
So because they were here to get a result and they got a result and they deserve it and um, that's it. Okay, last couple of questions here. Kaleem? Uh, yeah. Oh, go on. Uh, you ask it, well, I'll, I'll be able to um, understand it. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a few with obviously with the sound on around you, but go on, ask, ask, it, ask away. Yeah, I was just wondering about Alison's Ray Chamberlain's performance, what you had made of it. Obviously, in the second half, you seemed to move to the left of midfield. There we go. I think just because of the feedback, well, it's Alex Oxlade Chamberlain and what you made of his performance, and he seems to move to the left hand side of midfield more in the second period. I think is that fair summation? Oh yeah, yeah. We changed uh, we changed his um, second half at a specific point. We couldn't defend it with that anymore. Obviously, we tried to fix that, but um, changing to a four four two. That's what was Oxley uh, to go to the left wing and um, side to right. Um, apart from that, obviously, he set up the first uh, the second goal, uh, Sadio's goal with a nice cross. Um, yeah, and that, that's it. And then he was part of the bunch playing more or less, uh, yes or no. So um, um, we all can play better football, like Ox can play better football. But um, anyhow, it's good. He, he played, what was it, 70 minutes roundabout? Um, and that's good for him. So had now during the week 90, today 70. So now let's see how we how we can recover and what we can do with that on, on Wednesday. Great stuff. Dave Maddock, possibly to finish, if not, then Neil Jones. Go on, Dave, over to you. Uh, Jürgen, just two things. One one just on Graham Potter. Um, his side were brave, but they're 2 0 down to, to keep to their game plan and play the way that they did in the second half. I think they they played really well. Do you think that, I mean, he, he as a coach, has the ability to progress to go even further? I mean, obviously, he's taken Brighton a long way, but do you think he, he can go even further? He has all he would need. That's definitely all you need. I don't know Graham now too well. Um, obviously, he's, I think what I can say is an absolutely nice fella. And what I then can say is his team mirrors his ability. So, and that's um, uh, that's really good. He has obviously clearly about football and he's doing a brilliant job. I don't know, don't want to talk now to the coach of Brighton away to some other clubs, but it's, um, yes, I think he should not worry about his future. Um, but again, I don't want to take anything away of Brighton, really not. I respect a lot what they did. But today was the day where we could have given them a proper knock. And we didn't do. Because that's that's what... So I've, I don't like a draw at home at all. But um, I'm not that guy that says it's not possible to draw against Brighton. No, no, no. But my disappointment is because... I know we could have today was the day where we could have given them a proper one and we didn't do and that's the that's the frustration and then we talk maybe differently but that doesn't say anything bad about Graham Potter because the way they play is really good but against us it should have been should have been not enough today but it was because of us okay. and then you're gonna and also you, you you just you did speak then about body language and and, the def, and maybe the, the defensive line dropping too deep there was a moment in the second half when you you were had a bit of an exchange with Virgil. Was that over the the, the gaps between the defence and the the midfield? Uh, don't know one hundred percent. We have quite a lot of times for conversations. Um, so there's no never on one explanation. You cannot make now a massive story of that because the thing is, I said before, we didn't defend the half spaces, right? That's the problem. When you when, when, when the ball, but the guy on the ball is not under pressure. You can't have a high last line. So then the last line drops in that moment and then all of a sudden we put pressure on it and then they have to push up again. So these kind of things, we have clear rules, clear moments for when we do what. It's not an easy one. So it's not, but that was not about a specific thing. It's just we really, really, really have... Um, Ah, that, uh, now I know it. That was the situation when Marchi was um, pretty much a little bit the only player up front for, for Brighton. And, and, and yes, and, and Virch was too far away. Yeah, in that moment, it was about that, definitely. But yeah, that's a normal call, coach, player talk. And this is the final one. I can't promote Neil, but they're asking for an update on Naby Keita. What was the issue? Uh, yeah, he told me, he showed me the hamstring, and other people told me it's hamstring. I cannot say more.